Hey guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and we have a new package today. Let's have some fun. So normally we do a review of a product over the course of weeks and then come to you guys. I thought this one might be a little fun to do together. Now this is a Loop Deck or this is a product from Loop Deck. I'm not totally familiar with these guys, but I'm pretty sure this is one of these decks that you can use with Lightroom. It's gonna have a lot of buttons and knobs. And the whole idea here is that if you have a ton of images to cull through, this is going to burn through those images much more quickly than a standard mouse and keyboard. But let's go ahead and open it up and see if I'm right. Beautiful box, first of all. I definitely appreciate the uh, presentation here. All right, so just as I expected, this is the product that I've seen online before, but I don't know much about it at all. Just looking at the buttons that we have here, what they've basically done is taken everything and all of the sliders that are on Lightroom on that right panel, and they've made them physical knobs here. Every one of these knobs can turn. You can also press them in, and same goes for these. Control dial feels very nice. I guess the first thing that we need to do is figure out how easy this is to actually hook up to a computer and uh, get it running. So let's go ahead and try that together. All right, I've got my little workstation set up here with a laptop and a mouse. And looking at this user manual, it says to set this up, we need to head over to loopdeck.com slash setup. I would imagine there's some sort of drivers. So I've got the website pulled up here and you can see if you scroll down here, you can click on setup. I also imagine this works for both Windows and Mac. And here we go, here are the options. So I'm going to click on Windows because I am a Windows user. This is going to download and then let's install the drivers. All right, installation successfully complete. Literally took less than one minute. Let's close this out. Let's open up Adobe Lightroom. I've got some old wedding files here, just some raw files and uh, I'm just gonna plug in the loop deck at this point. I have no idea if it's just going to work when I plug it in or not. Loop deck connected. Loop deck thinks you look great today, all right. Oh, and it is working without literally doing anything at all. I honestly, I honestly thought it was gonna be more complicated than this. So I'm gonna be learning about this with you guys here. And uh, when I'm in the develop module, if I turn the control dial, it's actually a crop, which is very interesting. That's certainly a lot faster than having to use the mouse and grab something. Let's see. So you can actually press the control dial down. I can turn this to change the crop and then press the control dial. And that's kind of the return, enter, or go button. Let's see if I can click the undo button. Incredible, incredible. It has a directional keypad on the bottom right, like a standard keyboard, and we can cycle through the images here. So along the bottom left here, you'll notice that we have a few different options with colors on them. If you press these buttons while you're in this develop mode, it's going to change the rating. So you're not actually having to go to the number pad. You can just do it with, with your left hand while your right hand cycles through images. I love that. If you press the red button twice, it goes to a rating of zero. Okay, this is making sense. So let's mess with some of the colors and the exposure here. Let's see if this actually works. Incredible. So with just the twist of this knob, I am changing the exposure. And okay, if you press in the knob, it actually resets everything back to zero. And what's super nice about this, if you want to, if you're accustomed to using the panel on the right side, as I turn these knobs, it's actually changing the number over here. So if you're accustomed to looking at that, you can still see it. I kind of like just looking directly at the screen and trying to get a correct exposure on the picture itself. I really don't care what the knobs say. So you can see here, I'm just changing the highlights I can recover some of those blown highlights. That's pretty impressive. Shadows, nice. Let's see what other options there are. There's a D1 and a D2, and if I twist the D2, it immediately goes to sharpening and starts changing the sharpening of the image. You know, with, with some of these settings, for instance, the 
temperature or the shadows and the highlights, those are very easy to find. They're right at the top. Your mouse is probably right on top of them anyway. But some of the other things like sharpening, if you want to go to that, you have to go down each of these menus and expand everything. And that's what really adds up when it comes to time if you're talking about editing thousands of pictures. So I can definitely see if you're able to customize these to all the features that you personally like, this could completely change the way you edit a wedding. And then I, I love the fact too, that if I kind of get lost in my setting here, I feel like I've gone too far, but I don't really know where I was. All I have to do is press that button again and it zeroes it back out. That makes this so much faster than having to go back to zero yourself. All right, so I am learning a ton here. And as you'll notice along the top, there are a bunch of different colors. And if we wanted to pinpoint an individual color, you can see I can rotate this and it, what it's going to do is it's going to change just the red channel. Now, if I feel like I've gone too far, I can just press this in, it's going to zero back out, that's awesome. Let me see if I can, can affect these girls' skin tone. I'm just gonna go crazy with the orange tone here. So you can see I'm just pinpointing their skin tone, but here's the cool thing and what makes this so much faster. I was still expecting to have to come over with the mouse and click on saturation and luminance, but you actually don't have to do that. If you look on the loop deck, you can click on hue, saturation, and luminance. And when I click on each one of these, a light will show up right next to it and it will actually change what's going on the screen here. So jumping between these menus could not be easier. So you can see when it comes to something like saturation, if somebody's skin was overly saturated, this is something that happens all the time. Let me go ahead and bump up the saturation overall on this. So I feel like, you know, maybe the colors in this image look good, but their skin is neon at this point. What I can do is click on saturation here and then just take out the saturation in their skin tone. So I feel like we have a lot of saturation in the rest of the image, the nice blues in the background, the green of this flower up front, but we don't have that neon skin tone that can kind of overtake an image. And I did that way faster than I ever could with just a mouse. Now, something else that's really cool, there's a black and white button here. If I tap this black and white, it's going to automatically open up the black and white panel. And then once again, I can individually mess with every channel. So if I want to affect the way that just their skin tone looks, I can mess with that. And then of course, I really like having a much more contrasty black and white. So maybe I'm going to grab the contrast, bump that up a little bit. I'm going to raise the blacks a little bit. The shadows, we can bring those down as well. And then maybe we want to boost the highlights a little bit. Just make it a really nice contrasty black and white. Again, having to go back and forth between all of these settings with the mouse is significantly slower than doing this when you can see everything in one place. Now let's see what I can do to this image here. I'm going to bump up the exposure just a little bit. Let's raise the shadows a little bit. Highlights, we can recover those. Vibrance, let's push that up. And then again, I've got some really saturated skin, so I'm gonna click on saturation, lower the saturation just in the skin tones. Maybe bump the vibrance overall a little bit more. And I feel like this looks awesome. All right, so I just figured out if you hit C5 down here, it'll actually zoom in. I'm not sure if there's a way to zoom around with the loop deck, but I can grab the mouse, move around the picture, at 100% resolution, hit C5 to zoom back out. I can also click this before and after button, which is going to show these images side by side before and after my edit. All right, let's see what we can do to this image here. This one looks like my framing is a little off, so I'm gonna use the control dial here to get a more correct horizon line. That's awesome. So the control dial changes the, the tilt of the image if you're cropping it, and then this D1 key right next to it will zoom in or zoom out. Amazing. And then of course, if I need to, I can use the mouse to pick the exact right composition. And let's see what we can do here. I'm going to bump up the exposure just a little bit. I'm going to recover the highlights. Let's raise the shadows. Vibrance, I wanna bring that up again. Saturation, lower that down in the girl's skin. 
and then hit before and after to see them side by side. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> this is kind of bumming me out that I don't shoot weddings anymore because not only is this making it faster, it just feels more fun. It feels like I'm some sort of movie colorist or something. And uh, gosh, it's so much better than using a mouse. All right, I found what another button does. C6 on the right adds to quick collection or removes from quick collection. So if you're cycling through images very quickly, you can just hit C6 to add to quick collections. You can do that with one hand if you don't wanna use the other hand. All right, in the upper left-hand corner, there's this button that says custom mode. Right now it is not on, and I just figured out what this does. If I turn the shadows knob, for instance, what it's going to do is turn the shadow slider. But if I hit the custom mode button and then turn the shadows knob, it actually changes the shadows within the tone curve module. What this basically means is that any other feature in Lightroom that you don't see on this thing right out of the box, just hit the custom mode button. You'll be able to customize it and access any of them instantly. Here's an image that's overexposed, obviously. Let's see if we can recover this. And we can, the white balance is way off. Let's fix that. Looks great. Shadows need to come up a little bit. Blacks go down. And again, we've got a little bit of weird skin tones going on here. So I'm gonna lower the skin tones and then let's do a before and after. Incredible, incredible. <laughs> I, I honestly did not think that I would like this as much as I do. So I, I have to be honest, I haven't shot a wedding in a few years. So this is totally tailored for wedding or portrait photographers. If you're the type of person who's shooting hundreds or thousands of images, you have to get through them quickly. The only thing that I can think of that's better than this is dual monitors. But if you have this with dual monitors, I mean, you're gonna be unstoppable. All right, here's another image. Incorrect white balance, exposure's wrong. Let's see if we can get this down to a correct exposure. Recover some of these highlights. Let's see, temperature. and bring down the skin tones a little bit. Incredible. And I'm getting to the point already, I've only been using this for a few minutes where I naturally know where everything is. I was a little worried at the beginning that, yeah, everything I need is right here, but there's so many options, I'm not actually going to be able to find what I need. But this is really intuitive. I'm actually starting to find this to be more intuitive than all of the options that are natively in Lightroom. Now, as I'm using this more and more, I find myself not even looking at the sliders on the right side. I'm really just looking at the photos themselves. I'm turning these knobs and I'm just turning them to where the picture looks good. I don't really care what those knobs say. And so it just dawned on me, I don't even need to look at these sliders anymore. There's a button right on this thing for full screen mode. I can just tap that. It goes into full screen of each image. Everything still works the exact same, but I can change all of these parameters myself, but I can see the full res image. Now, keep in mind, if you're gonna be editing full screen on a 4K monitor like this, you're gonna need a very beefy computer. I've noticed that my little laptop here cannot handle this as quickly as it can when it's in standard viewing mode. But if you have a high powered computer or you have a 1080p monitor, this is the way to edit. This is so much better. All right, let's see what these P buttons do at the top. I'm going to click on P1. Okay, so this is going to do presets here. I can click undo in the upper left, set these different presets. Very interesting. So these are all totally customizable. If you have your own presets that you've made or purchased online, you're gonna be able to just hit any one of these buttons, instantly go to a preset. Unbelievable. All right, so let's say that you're editing a group of pictures, you wanna edit them, but you don't wanna edit each one individually. What I can do here, I'm just going to change the temperature on one of these to make it look crazy. I can hit the copy button down here in the bottom left of the loop deck, click on the next one and hit paste and you can see it's going to paste those settings over. And of course you could select multiple images, paste it all the way across. This makes things so much faster. All right, when we're all done, there's an export button right on here. Brings up the export dialog. Could not be easier. It's actually a lot faster than having to go into all of the menu systems and try to find what you're looking for. It's just right here. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I've never been a huge Lightroom user. 
I shot weddings for a long time and I just did everything in Photoshop. This was before Lightroom even existed. And then once Lightroom did exist, I ended up paying somebody else to edit my photos. So when I use Lightroom today, I am constantly hunting around to find things. Like for instance, the before and after button, I don't even know where that is in Lightroom to be perfectly honest with you. But because it's on the loop deck, it's just a button right here and it says before and after. I can use it immediately. So basically my point is, if you're the type of person who's not a professional Lightroom user already, this may actually teach you Lightroom faster than any tutorial will because everything you need is spelled out right in front of you. Now, there's no doubt that Adobe Lightroom allows you to customize a standard keyboard and you can kind of create shortcuts for the things that you use most. But the fact that you don't have any knobs on your keyboard, you're actually still going to have to use the mouse to change each one of these things individually, whereas with all of these different settings, I can actually change multiple settings at the same time. It's hard for me to explain this on camera, but this is much faster when you can see it all laid out in one thing and I'm not having to scroll through different menus and minimize and maximize different things. This is totally a game changer if you're going through hundreds or thousands of pictures at a time. Now, as I read a little bit more about this, Apparently, you can also use this in Premiere Pro. About a year ago, we released a video where I showed you guys how we customize a standard keyboard to edit footage as quickly as possible in Adobe Premiere. This, however, could be way better than that. If you spend just a little bit of time editing these buttons to do exactly what you need them to do, plus you have all of these knobs that you can color correct as you go on the fly, this could be a complete game changer if you spend a lot of time editing video. So let's talk about the build quality on this. Um, I am very impressed. I, I do not know how much this costs yet. We're gonna look that up in a second. I would imagine something like this is probably around three or $400 only because it's so specialized. I like the way the buttons feel. The knobs, these smaller knobs that turn, maybe I wish they were a little bit more tactile but they feel pretty good and I love the fact that they can press in and reset all of those options. I mean, that makes this so quick. I can just go through and hit them all and boom, we're zeroed out on an image. The control dial itself feels fantastic. It has a nice tactile, satisfying click to it and then to press this feels really, really nice. All of the other buttons that are keyboard style buttons feel great. They feel like a, any other keyboard. They have a lot of play, a lot of give to them, but it feels nice and soft, and I think you're gonna like them a lot. When it comes to layout, obviously I am learning about this with you as we go. I'm finding it very intuitive, and what I like about this is that I can just hit a button and see what happens, and I don't know if this is the loop deck, working or this is Lightroom working, but when I hit a button, it actually tells me on Lightroom what's going on. So for instance, I could hit a button like C1 here that I haven't hit yet. Okay, flag a pick. Now I know what that does. C2, set as a reject. Okay, that makes sense. So all of the buttons where you can rate an image or you can reject them or you can flag them are all in one place. Something else that I'm finding about this loop deck is that I am messing with a bunch of different options that I know what they do, but I would just not usually deal with them if I had to scroll through the menus and find them with a the mouse. The fact that they're right in front of me and so easy for me to touch, I'm kind of editing in a completely different way than I normally would. I think I'm getting better results and it's not adding that much more time. So this is, in just a few minutes that I'm using this, it's kind of changing the way I'm editing these photos. So obviously I haven't been using this for very long, but I am far more impressed with this than I thought I would be. Let's go ahead and look up the price and actually see how much this costs because that could be kind of the deal breaker. All right, it's a little bit cheaper than I expected. It's $249. I think that is incredibly fair for such a specialized piece of gear. Keep in mind though, if you're the type of person who's shooting individual photos, you're editing them one by one, this probably isn't for you simply because it's not going to save you that much time. But if you're like me and you shoot weddings, portraits, events, and you're having to burn through hundreds or thousands of images at a time, 250 bucks for this thing is an incredible value. Now, you can buy this directly from Loop Deck. They also sell it on B&H. They also sell it on Amazon. So wherever you feel comfortable buying it, it's available. So hopefully you've enjoyed this live review. If you'd like to check out this product, definitely click on the link in the description below. And if you'd like to see more free content just like this, head over to fstoppers.com for daily free content. And if you'd like to learn from many of the best photographers in the world, head over to fstoppers.com slash store.